Hi, I'm Chris Sadwight, the pastor of First Baptist Mayflower. Well, thank you for tuning in with us like this. Uh, we had a COVID uh, test in our staff this week, and so we are meeting digitally and online only. Um, we'll be interacting with you guys online, uh, but we miss seeing you. Uh, we're hopeful that things will uh, continue to trend well, that we don't see any spread at this time, uh, but we'll, we'll make a decision early next week. Uh, about meeting next week, so stay tuned for that. You can find out more information about us at our website, www.fbcmayflower.com. Uh, our Facebook page and YouTube channel have uh, some of the videos and announcements that go out, and so uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, if you're joining with us and uh, you'd like to give, uh, we want to give you just a couple of ways to do that. You'll see at the end of our service a video that helps you know uh, how to do that. And so uh, we're thankful for your giving, uh, celebrating what God has done here in 2020. Uh, just a couple of the other announcements and things that are uh, kind of happening. One is our church uh, Bible reading plan. Uh, you can find that again online. Uh, we'll also have some paper copies going out. But uh, join us as we spend time in God's Word this year. Uh, it's important. It's important spiritual discipline. Uh, the single most important characteristic of a follower and disciple of Christ is time in God's Word. So uh, get plugged in with us and read God's Word together. We'll also be continuing to, to pray for uh, on, on the 17th, um, our Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. On the 24th, we're still planning for our uh, Starting Point Connect class, which is an opportunity for those who have recently joined the church, are thinking about it, or just curious about it, uh, to find out more information. Uh, if you'll reach out to us, send me an email, chris at fbcmayflower.com. Uh, touch base with me here over the next couple weeks. Uh, get signed up. We're going to have a, a, a little lunch that time together, uh, give you some information, and answer any questions that we can. So uh, those are some of the things that are happening here over the next couple weeks. Uh, what you can expect here in just a few moments is we're going to worship together, so sing out loud. Uh, prepare to sing and, and worship God because He is worth it. Uh, you're going to hear uh, from me again uh, here in just a little bit. Uh, spending some time in God's Word, so grab your Bible. Uh, if you want to take notes, grab something to write those down. Uh, study it and, and read it and, and plug into it. And then we'll close uh, with a, another worship song and then just a little closing message. So I just want to open us up in a word of prayer. Uh, some of the things that we're praying for include obviously those affected by covid and those in our community that we're praying for, those who are working in the health community about that, um, our, our mission partnerships, the Gunselmans, uh, great news is we got to share that they are headed to Italy and so our partnership with them. So if you will just join me as we open in prayer and prepare to worship together, let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for the technology that allows us to meet like this. And Father, we pray for those that are uh, interacting, uh, whether that's happening live as this is going out or over the next few days as uh, things happen, an opportunity to, to engage, that Father, we worship you, that we hear uh, from your word, that Father, we're growing in our pursuit of you. God, we pray for those affected by COVID-19, those in our church family, uh, seeing some recovering and, and those who've had uh, effects from it, that they are uh, able to recover well, Lord, just give them health. Uh, for those that have experienced loss due to that, God, we just continue to cry out for your mercy and grace on them. Father, we pray for our gathering again, whatever that may be, uh, if that's next week or the next, uh, that Father, you draw us back together as your church and let us see the, the, the need that we have to be together in community. Life is better together in Christ Jesus. So now, Lord, uh, let us raise our voices in worship and hear from you and pray and, and know that you hear our prayers and we worship you as King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice on the cross that through our faith and repentance gives us eternal life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. Hey, everyone. We're so glad that you could be with us this morning. Uh, my name is Jordan Henry. I'm the worship leader, and we're just going to sing a couple songs. It is Holy is the Lord and Bless the Lord, 10,000 Reasons. We stand. We stand in bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome to see. Together we see everyone see. Holy is the
bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome to see. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy.
Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you um, just for keeping us safe um, um, just through this time of the virus. Uh, I pray that the people who are sick with the virus, um, they would just be healed um, and that they would they would uh, have a smooth recovery. Um, Lord, I pray for us as we go into this new year that we realize that you are truly in control of everything and you have been all the way through this time um, no matter what trouble what troubles us in this world Lord you are in control and I pray that we know that um, and I pray that we study that and that we just truly know that in our relationship with you that um, you're everything Lord that you are all over this earth Lord may that may the glory of you just fill this earth and Lord, we love you. Thank you for this time, and thank you for this time that we have to worship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. What a time of worship that was together. Again, we wish we could be doing that in person, but glad to be able to join together like this. Why don't you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32, going to look at verses 7 through 9, also into Psalm 77 and Psalm 9, if you want to go ahead and kind of get those uh, queued up, ready to go. We begin a sermon series called Reboot. I don't know if you've ever had a computer, uh, phone, some kind of device that uh, things aren't going just as, as they should, and so you've got to restart it or reboot it. You know, power it down, power it back up, and, and many times uh, that can fix it. In fact, working in, in IT for some years, I was one of the first things I'm asking you, have you, have you restarted the computer? Have you restarted the device yet? And so as we think about what uh, 2020 was, right, so many terrible things, so many uh, hard things that, that happened from coronavirus and uh, racial tension, the political scene to uh, hurricanes and, and fires. I mean, it has been a, a tremendously strange and, and oftentimes horrible year for so many people. So uh, should we be so quick to close the book? on 2020. That, that's our title this morning, Closing the Book. Should we close the book on 2020? Well, the answer is both yes and no. We, we need to turn the page and see that there is a newness and, and there's a new year and there's a new things in the future, but at the same time, we don't want to discount the past. We want to make sure that we have learned the lessons that we needed to learn from the past, that we have thanked God for the good things that came in the midst of the difficult times. And so as we uh, dive into this series on Reboot, we're going to spend a few weeks here and just walking into this new year, uh, beginning this morning with reflecting upon the past, reflecting upon 2020, uh, and then moving forward with some, some uh, kind of looking towards the future and reminding us of our, of our focus on, on the Great Commission. 
And so as we go through this, we want to ask ourselves that question, should we close the book? Should we be so quick to move on? And, and I want to make sure that we, we pause and reflect just long enough. As we get to Deuteronomy 32, one of the things that we're going to see here, uh, kind of setting that stage, uh, Moses has led the people out of the, the slavery and the bondage in Egypt. He's now led them through uh, to the promised land and then right up to the border. They sent the spies in. Things didn't go well. And so they've spent about 40 years wandering in the wilderness. And now most of that generation has passed away. And they're preparing now to actually go in. But Moses is not going to lead them in. The baton is about to be passed from Moses to Joshua. And so as Moses uh, gathers the people together, millions of people out in the, water, in the wilderness, he now uh, shares with them, the Deuteronomy is the, the second telling or the second uh, uh, preaching or, or speaking of the law, if you will. Moses recounts the Ten Commandments and the covenant with God. And now as he closes his time as leader, he, uh, he pauses and he asks the people to, to pause and reflect upon God's faithfulness, to think back to the past and what they've seen. And so I want to read for us in Deuteronomy 32, 7 through 9, to see in these verses how uh, we don't want to be so quick to, to close the book on, book on 2020 without having made sure that we have seen and, and thank God for the good things, without making sure that we're learning the lessons that we need to from 2020. So join me if we look uh, as we look in Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 through 9. Uh, God's Word says, Moses writes, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of past generations. Ask your father, and he will tell you, your elders, and they will teach you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance and divided the human race, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the people of Israel. But the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his own inheritance. I want us to see here in these first few verses and just reflect on God's promise. Reflect on God's promise. As, he, as Moses records these verses, he's asking them to remember the goodness of God in the past. Remember the, the promise that God has kept, the covenant with his people. And, and he's asking the, the fathers and the elders to remember all the good things. Now you have, to, you have to remember where this is taking place. People haven't seen a whole lot of good things as they've been wandering in the wilderness for some 40 years. God has, has met their uh, needs and the provisions. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But he's also uh, delivered them out of Egypt with, where many now don't even remember that. The miracles and the power of God demonstrated. And so uh, he, is, he is leading them uh, to, to go back in their minds and reflect upon God's promise and what he has done. He's leading them back to uh, remember the nations and how they've been given the inheritance. And that's, that's going back to uh, the promise that came to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, uh, God's people and, and their portion and where God is leading them now. Okay, As they, as they prepare to uh, leave behind Moses and that leadership, to transition to Joshua and that leadership, they're walking into the promised land, Canaan, where God had led them to go. And God is about to fulfill that promise that was made all the way back at Abraham, giving him the, his son Isaac, God's chosen people, their own place. It's the Lord's portion, His people. And you may think, well, isn't that just the Jews? And, and, and in a way it is in this case and, and where we're seeing the, the current context, but it also is those who are in Christ. The portion as God's people inherit his promise. Now further on through this passage, 10 through 14 goes on to point out a couple things that, that, God, uh, uh, that Moses reminds him of God's covenant with his people, but also of God's nurturing and provisions, paying some of that imagery of that caring father and the animal that watches over their young. God has done all of those things for his people. And then, verses 15 through 18, it's how the people have rejected and rebelled against God. Time and again, and we don't have to just see it here, we can just continue to follow the trajectory of the, the promises of God's people. God provides, and, and for a time, God's people worship Him, and then they reject. They rebel. They sin against God. They worship other gods, false gods. God has made this promise that we're seeing take place here in, in the book of Deuteronomy and in the lineage of His people with Moses as leader. And yet, the, the truth is still today, God has made promises to you and to me. Are we clinging to those promises? In fact, I like to just ask that as an application question instead of a, a point at the end. Are you relying on God's promises? As we reflect back to this past year, there could have been much to uh, be uh, just downtrodden about and depressed about, anxious about, fearful about. And yet I think as Moses reminds the, the people here, Moses, again, where he's coming, he's, he's led them this far, but he can't take them any further. And yet he can say, remember what God has done. 
Remember the covenant that he has with his people. Remember his promises. Church, as we leave 2020 and enter 2021, I, I want us just for a moment to make sure that we are relying upon God's promises. Because the things that we're seeing happen around us, the things that we have seen uh, over this past year take place, they do not in any way interfere with God's plan or His promise. None of this stuff has caught God by surprise. So as we reboot and as we reflect, we want to understand that what we have seen happen here in 2020 is not some way, shape, or form a God's plan being foiled. God is still on His throne. God's plan is still in motion. God's promises are still secure. I want us also to reflect upon God's production, what God has done, the works of His hand. I just want to give you for just a few moments some highlights from 2020. Some highlights of what God has done in our church and ultimately our community in the kingdom of God through this year. We began this year uh, really kind of uh, back with diving into God's Word together and, and, and kind of right away launched into Who's Your One campaign. Now before that got done, we, we ended up being shut down with COVID, but let me just tell you some of the conversations that took place. People sharing how they had in boldness and courage uh, asked for uh, asked someone how, how they could pray for them or, or had a gospel conversation. Uh, some had learned that their person did in fact know Christ and they brought joy into their life. And that is something worth celebrating, that God put people on our heart. We prayed for them, many talked to them, and even some celebrating stories about what God did in that relationship and planting seeds of the gospel. Our college ministry got started. And we're so thankful for what God is doing through our college ministry. Some of those uh, actually joining our church, and we'll get to it just a little bit later. Uh, God using uh, just this, this strange time to connect college students, both in ministries in our church and to one another, and we believe ultimately equipping them for work in the kingdom, whether that's in our church or another, it doesn't matter. It's the opportunity for what's happening with young people uh, in God's word, growing in relationships and fellowships with one another. The food boxes. Uh, we're, we're thankful for our food ministry. It's been going on for, for years at Queens Manor, but also uh, here we, we've had some changes, some opportunities to create a different uh, avenue to distribute. And uh, literally about 150 to 200 food boxes have come in and been distributed uh, by folks in our church. And we got to talk with folks, invite them to church. Some we saw uh, show up. We got to pray for people. We got to include information about our church and, and gospel tracts with that, the Gospel of Mark. And so uh, that's been something that's been different and, and good that has happened, uh, ultimately just been kind of drive-by, uh, but it's been a, a wonderful ministry and opportunity that we hope to continue into 2021. Acts 1 8 local mission trip. Uh, so many things kind of got canceled there in the middle, and, and this got shifted in Oct October. And what we got to do was to see about 20 of our folks gather together. And just to remind us what took place, we uh, prayer walk or prayer drove throughout pretty much our entire community of Mayflower. We, we gave away quarters and paid for laundry at our laundromat. We got some yard work done. Uh, we, we did a, a, a feeding down at Queens Manor, cooked some hot dogs for some folks there. A tremendous ministry was happening in and around our church and in and around our community. And, and although 2020 may be negative, that's a great thing that happened that you were a part of, that we as a church were a part of. People were added to our church family. I think it numbers about 18 uh, of folks that have joined our church and are right on the verge of doing that here uh, probably fairly recently. Man, what, what a glorious testimony that even while uh, meeting virtually and then uh, eventually kind of just meeting bare bones, God is adding people to our church family. Financial faithfulness and stability for the future. We, we saw God, uh, through you, uh, provide for all the needs that we had. We were able to take care of investing in uh, some of the equipment that we're using right now to do this that also allows us to do some pre-recording, but also to invest in future ministry, not just for uh, meeting what happens during 2020, but for the opportunity to uh, continue to engage our, our shut-ins for folks that, can, uh, that maybe can't come because of uh, some kind of a work, comp, uh, work conflict to be able to come on a Sunday, or, or uh, sometimes folks just have great anxiety or fear in crowds. And so uh, having the opportunity to have our, our services recorded and online engages people in a new way, not to mention people who may be looking to connect with our church for the very first time. Uh, this avenue uh, is a new way and a newer ministry that our church can continue to build upon and use. And this happened in the midst of 2020. Now, we would hope that it would happen in the future anyway, but they're kind of thrust into it, and God did something great out of that. 
we, we're meeting our budget, uh, seeing about 90, 95% of our giving from last year. Uh, as we've been reporting, in case you haven't heard, uh, we're, we're going to be somewhere over $20,000 paid down on our church debt this year. Praise the Lord and thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we uh, are taking care of all the things that we need to. We're improve, making some improvements, some areas in our building. Uh, the Fellowship Hall is already kind of beginning some of that remodel. We'll continue over the next few weeks and months. And then uh, we're, we're praying that uh, the faithfulness continues and we're able to just take the excess that's there after we take care of these remodels and things and just push that right onto that building debt. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your serving. Thank you for your ministry. Thank, for, thank you for praying for what God has done in 2020. There have been, there have been things that God has done, product, uh, producing, producing by God has taken place here in 2020, and we want to praise the Lord for that. In Psalm 77, 10 through 12, listen to what God's Word says. I will remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. I will reflect on all you have done, and I will meditate on your actions. We, we definitely want to reflect on God's promise, but we want to reflect on God's production, what God has done, the works of His hands, the actions that He has taken, and be thankful for what He has done. It can be easy to be sidetracked by all the negative and to think that 2020, if we were putting it on a scale where there was so much bad, so much evil, so much hurt, so much death, all these things, and that obviously it must be such a terrible year. And, and I don't want to discount that which was bad. But there has been good. There's been good that has happened in the kingdom of God. There's been good that has happened in His church. There's been good that has happened in our community because of what 2020 has brought. Let us reflect on the works and the actions, the things that God has done. And last, I want us to see and reflect upon God's provision. Before I do that, application questionnaire, have you thanked God for his production this year? Thinking back to what happened, have you thanked God for what he did? That, that list of things that we just saw, and then there's more. That's really just kind of a snapshot of things that took place. Have you thanked God for what he has done? Again, I, I, I know the negative has taken place. There's been losses in our church family. But we can still thank the Lord for His faithfulness, for the good, for His works, for His power being demonstrated. And now is God's uh, provision. And ultimately, I want to focus this on, on the grace and the good news of the gospel. If all the negative things may, may seem to outweigh the positives that happened this past year, and for some, I know that may be true, let us never forget the goodness of the grace of our God and the good news of the gospel. What, what is the good news of the gospel? It's that we, in our sin, rebelling and sinning against our Creator, had no hope for salvation, and yet God demonstrated and showed His love in that while you and I were sinners, Christ died for us. The good news of the gospel is that we cannot earn our way, but God has graciously given us His one and only Son, that we may believe in Him, that we may repent and turn from our sin and turn to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one and only Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and we can have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The greatest provision that God has ever made is the good news of the gospel for you and for me. No matter what may have happened back in 2020, we reflect upon and we close the book on, and it's bad, we, we want to move along. The good news of the gospel is worth clinging to forever and ever. For it changes not just this life, but our eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has provided all that we need, even in the difficult times. God has given us His one and only Son that we might be reconciled and made right with Him. Psalm 9 verses 1 and 2 says, I will thank the Lord with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous works. I will rejoice and boast about you. I will sing about your name most high. Are we praising and worshiping God? because of his provisions of our faith? That's our question. Are you trusting God's provisions with faith? The provisions of the gospel, the provisions of his mission and, and work for our life and for our church based in the good news of the gospel. We can look back and, and we can thank God for his promise. We can trust in his production and the things that he's done and we can put our hope all in, cash in all the chips and trust his provisions of our faith in Christ Jesus as Lord. You see, because God is good, he still moves in troubled times. 2020 didn't catch God off guard. 
2020 didn't foil God's plan. 2020 didn't stop the movement of the gospel. Did it change some things? Absolutely. Should we reflect on those, those hurts and the pains that are there? Yes. There's a time and a season for all of those things. And yet, there's good that happened. There's gospel work that happened. There is hope for next year, not because last year was so bad, but because God began a work that He is faithful and sure to complete in the future. Let us remember that God and His nature is good. In spite of the evil and the presence of, of hurt and pain and death and sorrow and sin and sickness and all of the things that could rattle us and shake our foundation, God is good. And He is working together, all things together, for the good of those who love Him. It may not be our definition of good. It is always His definition of good. The coronavirus didn't sneak up on God. Shifting the church and shaking its, its uh, foundations of just going through the motions. God, God wasn't caught off guard by that. We, we might want to say we want to get back to, to normal, right? But, but as we think about rebooting, I want us to see perhaps we need to get back to focus on what really matters, to get back on track. Should we hope that we can forget about some of the things from this past year? Do we want to reboot 2020, get to 21, get it? Absolutely. We want to get it over with and get it done. But should we be so focused on just turning the page that we forget to learn the lessons? Should we forget to thank God for the good that has happened, for the movement of the gospel that has taken place? Should we forget to look at God's faithfulness and the trials we have gone through? Absolutely not. Oh, church, let us let's be ready to reboot our life towards church to focus on what really matters. And as we reflect upon the goodness of God, His perfect faithfulness in all situations, let us cling to the hope of the gospel. We need a time to reflect. We need a time to, to reboot and get back to what really matters. Getting back on track. Not necessarily back to normal, but back on track what God has called us to. I close with these thoughts. Is the gospel so ingrained in who we are and so meaningful to us that in spite of what happens around us, we cling to Him? You see, church, when we ask ourselves these questions, are we relying on God's promises? Have you thanked God for His provisions this, and production this year? Are we trusting in His, His provisions with faith? When we think about those questions and we're willing to ask ourselves those questions, if we begin to make our life built upon His truth, His plan, His gospel. When we look around at some of the things that have happened, the coronavirus and, and financial trouble and political unrest and racial tension, and think about the, the, the state of the earth and the things that are happening around us, whether you believe in climate change or not, just the reality of the hurricanes, the devastation that happened there, and the, uh, the, the forest fire. Man, all that doesn't, doesn't matter about which we're politically or We've just seen those things and the hurt that they have caused, right? When we see all that negative, we, we can take that weight upon our shoulders and we can say, God, where are you in this? God, can we just get through it this year and get, get on to next year? And yet, May God not see those things, allow those things. Can God not use those things for His glory? Oh, church, I pray that we're willing to reboot, not because we want to just forget about the past, but because we want to reflect on it. Because we want to learn what we need to learn. There ought to be a few things that we've seen God do, some highlights in our church that we say, God, you are an awesome God for what you did this past year, in spite of the circumstances, overcoming the negative things around us. God, you are an awesome God with a plan and a purpose for the future that needs me, uses me to, to be involved in that, to meet the needs of those around us. Oh God, may you raise up within our church workers for the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Oh God, would you continue to, to draw people to be a part of your church that's, that's built upon your truth 
and your mission to take the, the, the message of the gospel to the nations. We've seen our, our partnership with the, the Gunselmans change, be able to talk about them. Praise the Lord. There's much work to be done, though. There's much to happen in your life and in my life and our church's life to continue to reach the lost in our community. There's much work that needs to happen to reboot and to, to make sure we're really focused on what really matters. Church, I'm thankful that it's 2021. That doesn't mean the work stops. That doesn't mean that, that the negative things around us are somehow going to all of a sudden just quit just because the, the calendar date has changed. We may still have a long and treacherous path forward, but here is what we know. God is good. Would you say that with me? God is good. Now, I know what you're thinking. Should I talk along with a video? Yes, you should. Because sometimes just saying those words reminds us of those truths. God is good. He is still at work, even when the times are troubled and hurting around us. I want us to pray here for just a moment, and we're going to sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness, a reminder of God's mercy, His grace, of His faithfulness, day after day. Would you pray with me now? Father, I pray that although we are thankful for this new year, that we're not forgetful of what you did last year. Father, thank you for these things that we can celebrate in the life of our church. Thank you for the, the spiritual discipline growth that has happened in, in members of our lives, sharing as they've spent time in God's Word, what you've done through that, that building that, that faithfulness together. Father, bring us together to do that even more going into this next year. Father, allow us the time to reflect and to see your promise, to see your, your production, that which you have done to trust your provision of the gospel forevermore. Father, thank you for your overwhelming faithfulness to us who don't deserve it in the times that would seem to, to push it away. And yet still, there you are, our creator, sustainer, our savior, God, faithful as always. Father, help us to be faithful to you to get back on track where we need to be personally, as a church, as your people. And Father, I pray that as we enter 2021, we come with an expectant faith. We've got a faith that says, we're not capable of anything, but you, God, you are capable of all things. Thank you for our time together in your word. Even uh, not live, but, but through this uh, online and, and digital time together. Thank you for how you were speaking to hearts and minds. And I pray, Father, you draw us closer together and closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank you for joining us today online at uh, First Baptist Mayflower, whether you do that through our website, uh, Facebook, or YouTube. Thank you for joining in and worshiping with us. We pray that it has lifted you up uh, through our worship, our prayer, and our time of just hearing from God's Word. My name is Chris Sadwine. I'm the pastor here. Uh, we want to say thank you. We want to give you just a few other things, uh, ways that you can find out information from us or connect with us. The first is this. If you have some decision that you need to make or want to reach out and speak to uh, myself or one of our staff, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, a couple ways to do that. One is through uh, our phone number here at the office. is 501 501- 470-0223. Uh, you can give us a call, uh, leave us a message, or, or speak to one of us there, or you can email us at office at fbcmayflower.com, and we'll be sure to get back with you, uh, again, if there's a decision that you need to make regarding our church, or if you want to find out more information, or just have a, a matter that you need to speak with someone, reach out to us and let us know. We want to encourage you to follow us and, and stay in contact with what's happening here at our church. Three ways to do that are uh, through the Facebook page, that's First Baptist Church of Mayflower, through our YouTube channel, First Baptist Mayflower, and our website, fbcmayflower.com. And if you go to those places, you'll be able to not only see some of the online services, but an online small group, uh, midweek prayer and devotional. Uh, you can interact with folks through there. And so we love to have you uh, connect with us more and follow and see what's going on here at our church, uh, including some of the things as we go through COVID and, and what changes on the back end. Uh, if you'd like to give, uh, we want to give you ways to do that. Uh, there's three primary ways. One is to bring by here to the office. The physical location is 4 Highway 89 North here in Mayflower, Arkansas, 72106. You can mail that in at P.O. Box 5, also Mayflower, Arkansas, 72106. Or you can give uh, online. You can do that at our website. Uh, there's a Give Online tab that takes you to Tidely, which is a safe, secure, and quick way to give. And so uh, we just want to thank you for your giving. What allows us to do is not just the ministry here in our city, but also in our partnerships with our state convention, our association, and with the Southern Baptist Convention all around the world, the gospel is happening. We thank you for your prayers and for your giving. And the last is if you have a, a prayer request, something that we can pray for you for, we want to know about that. We encourage you to go to our virtual prayer wall, fbcmayflower.prayerloft.com. And if you go there, you'll find a place where you can see some of the prayer requests and pray for them. You can also find a place to submit a prayer request. In the upper corner, you'll see three lines that you can click and put on a new prayer request that lets our prayer team know uh, a prayer, that you have a prayer request, and we'll get you added on and have our folks be praying for you. So uh, connect with us. Uh, stay in tune. And again, church members, we're, we're uh, grateful that you're staying connected with us like this. Uh, we long for the day where we can gather back together all the, under the same roof again. Uh, but during this time, we're thankful for technology. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for what God is doing and excited about the future. So pray that you have a, a blessed rest of the week. Again, reach out to us and let us know if something's going on, something that we can pray for or help with through the phone number or through the email. God bless you. Have a great week.